Hello, and thanks for joining us at Workday Rising, live from San Francisco. I'm Annette Malati, Vice President of Product Marketing for the Office of the CFO, and I'm super excited today to have Taryn Swampler, our Group General Manager for our Office of CFO Solutions, joining us today. Welcome, Terrence. It's awesome to be here, Annette. Thank you for having me. So let's just jump right in. Let's go um, we know CFOs are feeling pressure to both not only modernize their teams, but the, their function itself. Absolutely. So in terms of, in, in support of meeting the needs both today and in the future. So we'd love for you to share our vision and strategy and our core principles that are supporting that strategy. Yeah, that's great. So I've been talking to a lot of CFOs and auditors and other folks recently to help us build our vision and our strategy. And one of the things I've done is I made an assertion to them and I said, look, to simply describe your job as a CFO, it's to protect value and to grow the value of the business. Mm -hmm. And that resonated with them a lot. And so what we did was build a strategy around how we're going to get them to focus more time on growing mm -hmm. value mm -hmm. than protecting value. Mm -hmm. And the way we're going to do that is by automating a lot of stuff in terms of transaction processing, reporting, auditing, and other things to kind of take human intervention out of those transaction flows so that it mitigates risk and it puts more control around the process and they can start to focus on the grow function of their business, which is how to figure out where to invest in the business, what kind of future things they want to do, whether they should introduce new business models, or even just things that are driving and changing how their business works. Okay, so let's double, I'd like to double click a little bit on that notion of grow. Okay. And the importance of the planning function and how it's so critical to the future success of businesses. Well, so when we talk about moving from kind of protecting the business, like being a transaction operator and moving into being a strategic advisor and therefore helping mm -hmm. grow the value of the company, it's all about being able to figure out where you're going to invest and that's all about being able to do forecasts and being able to do planning. So we have a planning solution and it's a comprehensive planning solution. It goes across people and money and the idea here is you can manage your workforce, you can look at your revenue, cost, and other types of projections. And because it's all integrated in a single place, you see all the drivers that may affect where your business is going. Okay, so we've spent a lot of time uh, here at the conference this week talking about many of the innovations that are in our in support of our in support of planning, the planning function, yeah. and would love for you to share some of those highlights. Yeah, that's great. So I'll keep it high level, and I'll talk about three major areas of investment that we've made. So first it's around people, and it's specifically around kind of the bottoms up workforce planning that we have. And in that bottoms up workforce planning, we've completely changed the user experience to make it more friendly for folks to be able to do that. So for example, we have a headcount reconciliation. And what that means is it goes across finance and the HR function. And so as you do your plan to build out what your headcount's going to look like, you can actually see the actual results of what you've actually hired to plan, what the cost of that was and how you're doing. You can look at location strategy. You can do this all the way down to position. Really powerful. The second thing that we've done is we made an investment for the planners themselves. So I'm doing a plan. I would like to build out a bunch of scenarios. We have a formal corporate plan or workforce plan, whatever it happens to be. But I would like to play with some assumptions, add things, do data, maybe some what if scenarios. So we've implemented a personal what if scenario for the planner so they can iterate lots of times and when they're done, kind of lead it up into the, uh, into the main plan as it goes. And then the third and final thing is we spent a lot of time making sure that this application can scale. Mm -hmm. People are putting more and more data and details and more dimensions, including third party data like weather or sales forecast into the planning function. And as we do that with large volumes of data that might have lots of dimensionality, that might be lots of rows, there might even be lots of concurrent users, using our, uh, basically, our, our elastic hypercube technology, we've scaled this up so that people don't have a performance problem. It's really fast. Those are some really great innovations and I can totally see how those tie to and support the business, not only modernizing their function, but also supporting the growth, the growth of the business. So in addition to the innovations that you've just shared, we also announced a new packaged offering, yes. um, what we're calling a Workday Adaptive Planning and Consolidation, which will be available in the first half of 2024. Yeah. So we'd love for you to share how this new offering can assist customers in their finance modernization journey. 
Yeah, so let's talk about a journey. We, we tend to think that each customer's journey is a little bit unique of how they're going to do the finance transformation. And that's because it varies by where they are in their business process maturity uh, in terms of, of how good the processes are. It also varies by what sort of projects they can take on. And so typically, because we offer a full suite for uh, the office of the CFO, we, we, we'll see people do a finance transformation by replacing all of their financial applications, their general ledger, analytics, and other stuff. But not everybody can start there. So that's why we have a planning solution that we can sell standalone, and they can start by transforming the planning function to begin with. What we have identified in the market is some customers like to do planning, but maybe also then change their consolidation functionality. So we've added this packaging together so that people can start that journey more easily. So just out of curiosity, how would you say, um, you get a rough idea of the percentage of people that are full transformation versus uh, you know, starting with planning or kind of doing that more top down from like a consolidation perspective? I know I'm throwing you a little bit of a curveball here, but I'd love to hear your, your perspective on, do you think we're 30%, 50% are full transformation? Or do you think that there's, because we've, we've been seeing the market steadily, our customers, or prospects and market steadily moving to the cloud. Sure. But love to hear your perspective on that. No, it's, it's an excellent question. And I think what happens is you actually have to segment the market. And the segmentation that I would do is by industry mm -hmm. and then by size of company. Mm -hmm. So kind of where they sit in, in terms of their size. And so what we'll see is smaller companies find it easier to do a full finance transformation and certain industries find it easier and more um, accommodating to do a, a, a full transformation. We see that a lot in healthcare, we'll see that in financial services, we'll, we'll definitely see it in government and higher education where they'll do more of a platform full uh, transformation. Uh, but then as you get to very large organizations and you get to folks that may have multiple ERP systems or they're highly diversified in what they do, they're not as equipped or it's not as easy to make that full finance transformation. So they'll start with a planning function and consolidation. And so I don't think it's a pure percentage, but I think it really varies by the industry or market segment you're in. That, that's a great point. And thank you for that color, um, the additional detail. Okay, so let's spend a little bit more time drilling down on the um, the Workday Adaptive Planning and Consolidation offering and what value our customers can expect from that solution? No, that's fair. So we, because we offer the standalone planning solution, it's very agile and flexible and we talked about some of the nice differentiation there. What we are doing is taking the capabilities that we have already in our Workday financial application around consolidation and we're exposing that. We're simplifying how the implementation will work. We've supplemented it with some features that would be for a standalone consolidation solution like a trial balance ingestion. And we're beefing up stuff around the consolidation um, uh, like supporting schedules. And we're adding those capabilities as we go. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. It's a proven solution with over 800 customers running on it in terms of how you do your consolidation. It's fully integrated to financial planning through our um, planning configuration manager. Um, and it has supplemental features that will be unique to a standalone customer as they go do that. And I'd kind of like, again, like to drill down a little bit that if we see a customer that does purchase consolidations with planning, how do we see that as, you touched on it a little bit before, but how do we see that as almost like also maybe an early phase in a phased approach into um, full transform and into full modernization or full transformation project because I think that sets up a nice if many if many folks there's going to be some customers that that's what they need today sure but they do have a longer term vision and like you talked about the phases of where people are in their journey but I still think this creates a really nice foundation for customers to no that that's very fair um, as we do at Workday all the time as we deliver capabilities to our customer and they start to use it. Um, we hope that the feature set itself entices them to want to expand that usage with us just naturally. And let's use the case of planning. So we have a large number of our planning customers that start with that, that are now expanding into HCM and financials because they see the value of the platform, they like the service level that Workday provides, and it's an easy transition for them. As we supplement that with another solution like consolidation, that allows them to set their financial data model down, and it makes it just an easier step for them to go forward. Maybe add some subledger capabilities to one of their divisions and run full financials. Uh, maybe add on an accounting center for the capability of bringing in you know, third party data that they need to account for. So Love it. a very easy transition. Love it, thank you for um, uh, responding, I appreciate that. 
Okay, so another innovation um, we've been discussing a lot this week. I, I'm surprised we've gone uh, this long without talking about AI. Uh, oh, is okay. how Workday is helping finance leverage AI. Not only we're not only innovating in the product, so we've heard a lot about that this week, but we're also helping educate customers on that journey. And a great example is um, the new AI for Finance certification program developed in partnership with. Uh, the MIT Sloan Management Review yep. um, program features experts from not only MIT Sloan, but Deloitte, Stanford, uh, AICPA, SEMA, and Workday itself. And you, I know you've had the opportunity to not only present and speak to many of these uh, experts featured in this online certification program, as well as our customers on this topic. Yeah. So in the uh, few minutes that we have left, love for you to share your advice to finance professionals um, as they think about embracing, leveraging AI uh, when it comes to the finance function. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. So first, first I'd like to talk a little bit about just feature set, right? So we already have a number of machine learning or AI features that are in the system. And generally what it's about is transaction automation or identifying anomalies or even providing recommendations of what you might want to do. And so we've started to build that out for our, for our customer base as we go forward. <clears throat> if I take the conversation back to the ability to protect um, value yes. and to grow value. What our aspiration is and what C CFOs and other controllers are looking for is the ability to get to a touchless transaction process where they have automated all of these transactions so that the protect part is really easy. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for basically upskilling their teams to become more strategic advisors. And the goal is to allow them to operate as analysts and thinkers and people that guide the business. So as we, as we look at where AI can be infused, it's going to be around transaction automation. But the really fun part is going to be when we get to the AI or machine learning, where we start to help them with analysis, where we can do much better predictive forecasting, where we can compare plans that might be forecasted against a, a planner's individual forecast. We can look for biases and assumptions in either plan. Maybe there's data anomalies there and we can start to identify correlations or causality by dimensions that a human would never be able to identify or find, basically supplementing folks as we go forward. And so the way that I think finance professionals are starting to look at AI, whether it's generative AI that's going to help them as managers and help them improve their coaching and help them improve development plans for their employees, or whether it's the ability to identify growth plans and learning opportunities to help them upskill, it's also going to be around being able to do high level detailed analysis mm -hmm. to make more accurate forecasts and predictions around where stuff's going. But what I want to caution everybody is, the finance folks aren't worried about a super accurate forecast. What they really want is help identifying why things aren't going to plan mm -hmm. and what can they do to take actions or recommendations as a strategy to actually go solve that. And I think they're looking for AI and generative AI tools to bring that structured and unstructured data together and tell kind of a story about why things are happening and what recommendations you may be able to offer and then use their own judgment to actually turn that into a more formal corrective action or plan. That's a pretty exciting future for the accounting and so. finance. I think for both the accounting and finance function because I know the accounting folks would probably really appreciate getting out of some of that what we've kind of affectionately been calling drudgery, right? <laughs> and getting more into some of the exciting things and have them um, and you know up level or skill their up you know, upskill their their functions. So um, thank you for um, for elaborating on that. Um, and I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. And Terrence, thank you so much. As always, I learn something from you every time I talk to you and I've enjoyed <laughs> their confirmation. And thanks to all of you that have been watching live and those that will be listening to the recording in the future. Um, you're watching Workday Rising live from San Francisco. All right, thank you guys. Enjoy and have a great workday.